Hi, welcome to my channel once more. How are you doing? I hope you are doing okay. From whichever part of the world you are watching this video from, you are welcome to the channel. My name is Dr. Lupin. I make videos based on health. I create a public awareness on some of the emerging diseases that people should be careful about. I also offer some medical advice. Yes, in this particular video, I'll be talking about how you can deal with chronic addiction of alcohol. Ha! Big topic, right? So let's not even waste any time. Let's just go straight into the video. Yes, alcohol around the whole world. Everybody, not everybody, sure. Alcohol is taken by every part of the world. You go, you see alcohol. Right. So it's like a recreational drug. Let me just put it that way. And not that I'm trying to mock anybody who's chronically addicted to it. I would say it's a process. It's progressively gets them. So they've started from acute. Acute is like that one is the low. It has not really gotten anything. You understand? It's still there trying to shake body. And then it moves progressively to chronic. Chronic, then that's worse. Now, why is it difficult for someone who is chronically addicted to alcohol? I'm talking about alcoholics that they are, they are addicted to it. Why is it difficult for them to stop? Now, it's not actually that it's difficult for them to stop. They can actually wake up and say, I don't want to drink alcohol again. Because they know very well it's doing them no good, right? So they know. It's not as if they don't know. Or they, it's not as if you don't know. But it's not as if I don't know. Let me use myself, not like I'm a chronic alcoholic, but let me use myself for the purpose of reading. But it's what comes after they say, I don't want to drink. And what's that? Withdrawal syndrome. Withdrawal syndrome is very powerful. It's very intense. And it can be deadly too, to a lot of people. Why? Now, you've taken alcohol to a certain degree that now your body is dependent on that alcohol and then you wake up one day and say i don't want to drink this alcohol again what happened your body is dependent on this alcohol so automatically your body will try to cause a reflex action to happen in your body that it will make your body look as if the only antidote for this feeling you are having now is to take alcohol and because of that withdrawal syndrome some people it, it might land them in the hospital they might become something else. You 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 see them and be like, really? Is this actually the person I know? Because it can be very terrible. So the withdrawal syndrome is very powerful. It stages the stage one, stage two, stage three of withdrawal syndrome. I don't want to talk about all of that because of now. I know you are, you want to know. Okay, so what do I do? How do I solve this problem? Now most times. There is always a pharmacological intervention for people who are chronically addicted to alcohol. And that means you have to go to the hospital. Why? There is a drug. I don't want to mention all those drugs because I don't want to make the whole thing look complex. But you know that there is a drug therapy. If someone is addicted or if someone is intoxicated with alcohol, normally if they are rushed to the hospital, they infuse a manitol solution. Manitol is more like another compound or substance that will compete with the receptors that the same alcohol binds to in the body. So in doing so, it will reduce the action of alcohol. So let's say this manitol, this alcohol, they are all going to the same place. If manitol is higher than alcohol, it means it will compete more with the receptors and reduce the action of alcohol. Because of that, alcohol might be excreted out through the kidneys, right? And then the first person is fine. But in alcoholics now, this is chronic alcoholic. And chronically means that it does some damage to the liver, most likely. The kidneys are also affected. The GIT could also be affected. So now, in, in, in this situation, it makes the person very, very difficult to stop, difficult to, to, to treat. Yeah, not really, really difficult to treat, but then, other organs too, they are affected because of this chronic alcoholism. So because of that, now it, it kind of it gives a wide spectrum for that person to be treated. So the number one thing is for chronic alcoholics, you have to go for a drug therapy. 
most of the times the withdrawal syndrome comes with so many psychoactive behaviors you know there's behaviors that are not actually normal and then you start behaving as if you are really mad please if you find yourself among someone like that you don't just conclude they are mad it's withdrawal syndrome it can be very powerful trust me it can be really really powerful so there are drugs that they can give to help in those situations Benzodiazepines, for instance, phenotyazines, they are also drugs that can be given to such uh, instances to help them. Now, there's also a drug that actually is given to, to numb the test, to give the person another a, a feeling of, you know, when, when someone takes alcohol after some time, maybe they've taken alcohol today, after two days they've not, third day they want to take alcohol. There's this feeling they get when they take that alcohol. It's like, oh, something you've not taken in a long time. That particular feeling. So, there's a drug that helps to numb that feeling so instead of having that good aftermath feeling you get after taking the alcohol now you get a, 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 an awful feeling an awful taste so because of that it, it kind of reduces your receptors to this alcohol now on your own part there's something you can also do which i made a video about three ways you can actually take alcohol safely Please, if you have not watched that video, go and watch it now. That's one thing you can start at home. If that's you are at home now, you've not gone to the hospital, but you are chronically addicted to it, and you are like, okay, on my part, what can I do? Go and watch that video. Three ways you can safely take alcohol without health complications. Now, that it might not basically help you completely, but it can still kind of help you in a certain way, so that it doesn't cause more damage than it should has already caused your system so if you go to the hospital you don't have to worry about your withdrawal you know in some patients it's usually difficult because sometimes even if they go to the hospital it still takes a lot of time and concentration before they finally get well or you know get sober from alcohol but then on your own part go and watch that video yes watch that video and then you know on your own part what you are going to do but let me just give something because you came all the way to this video, right? So let me not make it look as if you came here for nothing. The best you, as the chronic alcoholic, eat food, please. Please and please eat food. I'll, I'll do a part two of this, this video. I think so. I should do a part two. The, the amount of comments I get will determine if I will do a part two. Eat food. If you are a chronic addict, if you are chronically addicted to alcohol, the best you could do for yourself, at least you could help yourself, eat food before drinking. Anytime you want to drink, eat food. Now another trick, another trick with food is this. Let's say you want to take it. Uh, some people their their threshold is very high. Some can take twenty bottles and still feel good. So let's imagine you want to take 10 bottles, for example. You are the type of person that takes 5. Let me put it at 5. If you eat food, you know that it will be very difficult for you to finish those 5 bottles. Yeah, because the food already in your stomach will, will, will kind of occupy the space. So instead of taking those 5, you might end up taking 3, or 2, or 4, as it does if you try. So you see now, you've just tricked your body. Now, remember, 90 to 98 percent of alcohol is usually excreted out of the body. It's only one percent that remains unchanged, that is not metabolized, that comes out like that. But then, when your stomach is weak, when your mucosa, the lining of your stomach is weak, the too much of this alcohol can also distend your stomach. And before you know, you have perforations. And before you know, awesome. Before you know, uh, irritable bowel syndrome and all of those things can come in. It's funny go. So eat food, please, eat food. Some people, they will be hungry, but the money they have, instead of buying food to eat, they will go and buy alcohol. Please, don't consider them as the worst human beings on this planet. They are not. It's something that is doing, it's now it's psychologic. It has gotten to their head. If the addiction level, the dopamine level that is, they get, that feeling they get, is it exceeds the one that comes from the food center of the brain so they are more prone to go to that which excites them more than the other part there's someone that likes food a lot the person will not choose alcohol over food because the side of the brain that makes them happy is food it's not alcohol 
Likewise, the same person that is addicted to alcohol, it's that alcohol that makes them happy. It's that alcohol that gives them joy. So don't consider them the worst human beings. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, subscribe. You can support me by subscribing to the channel. Share this video across your friends, your relatives, anybody who might find this interesting or you, anybody you know who is chronically addicted to alcohol that might need to be at this. I will drop my email if you want to send me a message privately you don't want to say it in the comment section yes no uh, you don't want to say it in the comment section no problem send it to my email follow me on tiktok on instagram and on twitter see you in another video